Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you the new Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi, the new super powerful board that Arduino just released. So let's get started. So I was one of the lucky ones that Arduino chose to send their boards so we could test it out. I should have probably released a video a couple weeks ago, but this happened. Yeah, I got a broken finger during my vacation. I even had to undergo surgery. So while my pink is and I am a little slower than usual, we are back again with exciting news. This board has some really exciting new stuff, mostly for us audio people. So let's start talking a little bit nerdy here. So let's dive into the details of what makes this board so powerful. At the heart of the Giga R1, there's a dual-core 32-bit microcontroller, this fancy name here. This microcontroller features a Cortex-M7 core running at 480 MHz and a Cortex-M4 core running at 240 MHz, allowing you to run both MicroPython and Arduino code simultaneously, so you can run your audio in one processor and your display in the other, for example. The board also has wireless communication capabilities, thanks to its Murata 1DX chip. Whether you prefer Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, the Giga R1 Wi-Fi has got you covered. So let's get to the juice now. The board has 76 GPIOs, general purpose inputs and outputs, pins and extra headers, allowing you to expand your project as needed. What's cool is that you can access these pins from underneath the board, which means you don't have to rearrange your project if you want to add more things. In terms of connections, the Giga R1 Wi-Fi has a USB-A connector, which is suitable for hosting USB sticks with audio samples, other mass storage devices, and HID devices, keyboards, mice, or a MIDI controller. It also has a 3.5 mm input-output jack connected to DAC0, DAC1 and A7, which is very useful for audio projects. The board has a USB connector for power and programming, as well as simulating an AJD device like mouse, keyboard or MIDI controller. There's also a JTAG connector and a 20-pin Arducam camera connector, so you can make some cool stuff like computer vision. Okay, so I just plugged the audio cable with the 3.5 millimeters jack, and I'm going to plug this into my computer, into this USB-C port. And let's take a look here in their website. Here you can find the documentation for the Giga R1 Wi-Fi. Setup guide, get started, pin out. We can see that we have lots and lots of inputs and output so you can build a really big MIDI controller or synthesizer and we have all the orange pins here are analog pins we have the DAC which is the digital to analog converter which will convert the digital signal from the Arduino into analog and send this through those pins which means we can play analog audio and we can use those pins or the audio jack so DAC1 and DAC0 are connected to the audio jack and also there it's connected the pin A7 that can be used as a microphone so the audio jack can both be a DAC left and right or an ADC but what we want to take a look here is in the audio so here we have some guides and we have here the advanced ADC deck guide. So we can learn a little bit more here and we have some examples. So in the Giga R1, you can find the powerful STM32 8747XI, which is a dual core 32 bit ARM Cortex. So the normal Arduinos usually are eight bit and this one is 32 bit. So way, way faster, great for audio. So really important here, uh, the Giga R1 does not have an amplifying circuit on board, so connecting speakers that does not have an amplifier can damage the deck and the board itself. So I am connecting here to my audio interface, so I have an amplifier there. So we have some examples here. So analog to digital converter, here is where you can connect a microphone or 
you can actually connect multiple microphones. You can do multi-channel input. So here we have multi-channel ADC. We are not going to do those input examples because I don't have any microphone connected here. But let's take a look at what we have. A serial plotter example. So I guess here you can plot or visualize the waveform that's coming to the Arduino in the IDE. So here we have the digital to analog converters, which will be the outputs. The Giga features two 12-bit buffered DAC channels that can convert two digital signals into two analog voltage signals. Some of the features of the DACs are 8-bit or 12-bit monotonic output. So instead of our classic 8-bit, we have some pretty decent 12-bit. We have left or right data alignment in 12-bit mode. So I guess we can do some stereo stuff and some other fancy stuff. So let's take a look in the examples. The following example shows how to output 8K Hertz square wave on DAC 0. So let's copy, let's paste it here and let's upload. I have my board connected to my Ableton Live. So we have this pretty high frequency, which is um, 8K Hertz. So it's 8000 Hertz. So let's find where we can change that. Um, so here in the beginning of the code, here is where you initialize one instance of this uh, class. If we put the mouse here, we can see that the first parameter is the resolution, then the frequency, then the number of samples, then the number of buffers. But what we can change here is the frequency. So let's put 200 instead of 8000. So now we have a 200 Hertz square wave plane. So let's change this to, let's say 500. Okay, so now a 500 square wave plane. And if we take a look in the code, here we have a buffer that holds the sample of, uh, I guess, one cycle of the waveform. And we could get really tacky and nerdy here of how you actually implement a waveform uh, in a microcontroller but that's not the point of this video. Let's take a look in another example. So this one is a waveform ger generation based on input. This example here can generate different waveforms. So let's change the default frequency to 200 and let's upload. So here we have a sine wave at 200 Hertz and here we have the option to change to other waveforms here we can change to triangle square wave sine or sawtooth so let's open the serial monitor so if we press so if we press T now we have a triangle wave R is a sawtooth wave and as we come back to a sine wave. And here we are generating uh, the waveforms in real time. Uh, so it's nice to see how mathematically you would generate a, a waveform. So a triangle wave, uh, it's just a wave that goes up during half of the cycle and goes down during the other half of the cycle. So it does that. So that's what this math is doing here. A square wave is maximum for half of the cycle and, um, well, let's say one for half of the cycle and minus one for the other half of the cycle. Then the sine wave is a little bit more complicated. Then you have a sine function, uh, two pi, it's more complicated. And then the sawtooth is just a ramp. You go up, 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 and for the whole cycle and then when the cycle begins again you come back to zero. That's the hard-coded way of uh, playing a waveform and for an actual synthesizer this is not the ideal. When we get to other videos when we will try to actually make uh, musical sounds when you use like hard-coded waveforms you have 
an artifact which is called aliasing, where you can hear some unwanted harmonics. We can make a whole series of videos of DSP for beginners uh, and tell me in the comments if you'd like that to explain you how um, sound is generated in a computer and how that becomes a uh, real sound for us uh, with our speakers. And when you do this kind of hard coding for waveform, the waveform doesn't sound as good as if you were just using an analog component. So for that, you need some fancy math to do uh, band limited waveforms. And for that, we will need some other fancy libraries. So right now, using the Arduino Advanced Analog, you can create waveforms. You can do pretty much anything, but it's still hard if you're not uh, really a experienced programmer on DSP. But the good news are that when I talked with the Arduino developers, they told me that they're already uh, working together with the developers that made the Mosi library. Maybe you know Mosi. Mosi is a library that um, is for making synths, and I hope I can get to that in the near future. But the old Arduinos are not quite as powerful as this one, and the Mosi library still doesn't work in this one. So when they get the Mosi library working on the Giga, you can expect some really great results. So this was my overview of the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi and I can't wait for new audio libraries or a new Mosi updated library so we can make our synthesizers with this board, okay? So while I don't have a content for how to build synths yet here in the channel, I do teach how to build MIDI controllers and I have complete courses on how to do that. You can check here the Nerd Musician Pro. The Nerd Musician Pro has three courses inside of it, the Making Music with Arduino, where I teach how to build MIDI controllers without having to learn how to code, only adapting my templates. It has the Arduino programming course, where I actually teach how to code, and the KiCad PCB design course, where I teach how to make printed circuit boards. You can buy each of them separately in this page below, or buy them as a bundle, as the Nerd Musician Pro bundle, at a discount. Okay, so what do you think about the Giga? What you'd build with this board here? Let me know in the comments. So, see you in the next video. Ciao.